The project feature allows you to get geometry from any 3D surface and project it onto a sketch plane, wherever that sketch plane may be. It's basically going to um, essentially shine a light on the existing model and have it show up on the sketch surface. So I'm going to do an offset plane from this part of the leg. I'll just offset this a little bit. And I'm going to use that plane to do my sketch on. So I'll create a sketch, click on this plane. So now we're actually, if we look at this in 3D space, this plane is fairly far away from the table. And if I want some of this geometry in this sketch, I can go into Project, which is in my Create menu, I have it here on my toolbar, but it's also uh, used so often that Fusion made a default uh, shortcut key for it, which is P for project. So I'll press P, and you can see as I hover over geometry in the model, um, red, a red outline of what I'm hovering over, whether it's a point, whether it's a line, whether it's the entire surface, will show up on the sketch plane. So I'm going to click here on these three rails. I'm going to click on this piece. Um, I'm going to click on this point. I'm going to click on this line. And now click on Enter. So now on that sketch plane, I have all of this purple geometry that was projected from you know, its position in 3D space onto the sketch plane. And then I can do whatever um, I normally do with the sketch geometry. Um, you could change this into uh, construction geometry. If I uh, click, I uh, select it and uh, press X for construction. Um, I can leave it as normal geometry. You can see that I could ex extrude any of these pieces um, if I exit the sketch, finish the sketch. Um, this is just like any other geometry in a sketch. So I'm just going to select and extrude just to show you. So you can think of it as just normal sketch geometry, but it came in from other 3D uh, bodies, faces, edges, or points. I'd like to go over some of the common issues in Fusion that I run into, and I assume you might run into them as well. Um, one is when you start a sketch, um, let's say for instance you have something selected. You don't realize it or you forget about it. And then you go up to start a sketch and you, you, know, you want to select a sketch plane, but uh, it's already been selected for you and it's not the plane you want. So you could finish this sketch, but it made a sketch and here it is right here. There's nothing in it. Um, so I don't like that. It's like I would have to find that sketch and edit it, or I've got, an, I've got another sketch in here that's basically empty. So if that happens to me, let's say I've got that selected, I go to create a sketch, and I realize, oh, I don't want this sketch. I'm going to control Z out of it until that sketch actually goes away in my browser. So depending on how much I did in that sketch, it may take multiple control Z's to, to erase that sketch. And then I unselect, go back into the sketch, uh, create sketch mode, and pick the, the proper uh, body. So generally, I do not, if I'm accidentally in a sketch, I do not press finish sketch. I use control Z instead. All right, the second common issue is, let's say you want to make a new component and you don't have the top level um, component selected. And so I go ahead and I start making a component and I give it a name. And then I look over in the browser and it's like, oh, that's not what I wanted. Okay, so you don't have to undo out of this. Generally, you can simply click on this and drag it up to the top level and now my component shows up in the same level as all my other components. If that dragging does not work, I would suggest going to the top level 
and, and making sure you're at the end of the timeline. If you're not at the end of the timeline, dragging things around within the browser generally fails. Okay, so the next thing is when you use the line tool very quickly, it's possible, let me start a sketch and see if I can demonstrate this, it's possible to um, get very short lines drawn that you don't want. I may not be able to to do this. I'll give it a try here. Oh, there it is. Okay. So I clicked once. Let me zoom in on this. See how I have a little tiny little line segment? I clicked once here. I very quickly moved away. Maybe the mouse button wasn't up yet. I don't know really what causes it. But to prevent this, when you go into the line tool, you can be very deliberate. Click, move, click, move, click. You know, if you wait a half a second or so between clicks and moves, you generally won't get that problem. But if something weird or say you can't select an entire line when you click on it, that's probably what's happened to you. So just beware and just be more deliberate when you're making lines in a sketch. Um, the final thing is using the move tool and the pivot within the move tool. So I'm going to go up to my top level component and hit M for move and select components. And now I can select the component I want to move. And when I do that, I get this pivot here. Let's say I just click. And if I wanted to move this um, to another body, I, I can, can't really do that because I need the pivot exactly in one of these corners. So if you forget to set the pivot correctly, you can go to this set pivot, which is going to allow you to actually move this pivot around. Okay, so say I want it here and I'm going to click. That does not finalize the movement of the pivot. So if you, and, and the general assumption is that it, it does. So now it's like, okay, why is my piece not moving? Well, I'm still in this pivot, set pivot mode. And the green check mark um, sets the pivot so that then you can actually move the piece. So a lot of times, once you've missed that initial uh, opportunity to move the pivot, it's kind of hard to get it where you want. So in this case, I would exit out of my move command, hit M again, come in here, select components, select, and now if I want to move the pivot, I can click on set pivot, click on this corner, and then make sure I click on the green check mark. That will set the pivot, and now I'm actually moving the piece instead of the pivot. Personally, I think it's fairly important to set up the toolbar uh, based on the tools that you commonly use in Fusion. Obviously, this gives you a quick and easy way to make selections of these tools and you don't have to go down into a lengthy menu with very small text in it. But the one thing that might, you, it might not occur to you is that if you see these icons every time you use Fusion, you learn what they are, and then when they appear in the timeline, you know what these things are. So I'm going to make a couple of changes. I pretty much have this set up the way I like. But um, one thing I don't like is the new component is in the Assemble menu. And you're always taught in Fusion to work your way from left to right, top to bottom, across these you know, uh, interfaces that they have. So I noticed that in Create, there's also a new component. So I can go in here and pin that to my toolbar. And since I want that to appear before the sketch, I'm just going to drag it over here. OK. Now, if there's anything that I don't want in a toolbar, I can simply drag it outside of the toolbar and it goes away. I'm actually going to put that back in because I do use mirroring quite a bit. So I'm going to do a pin to toolbar. So not only can you get it in there, you can also change the order of things. 
And so in this case, I don't want new component in here twice. So I'm going to drag it out of my assemble menu. So it's really that easy. Um, some of the things I suggest, new component, obviously create sketch, extrude. Um, I use lofts a lot. Um, rectangular pattern and mirroring, certainly used a lot in woodworking. Split body, combine, press pull, which is different than extrude in that it offsets the face. So if you have something that's uh, like a, like a uh, tapered leg, it will continue with the taper when you extrude something. Uh, fillet and chamfer I put together because they're you know very similar features. This is move and this is change parameters. Um, in assemble I have joints and rigid groups and in construction I have offset plane, mid plane, and plane at angle. In inspect I have measure and component color cycling which is great to identify unique components versus identical components. For instance, these rails right here are identical, and you can see they are because of the same color, the same with these little blocks in here. Um, so that's kind of a toggle on and off between the material and this color cycling. And then I can in uh, insert an SVG or insert a canvas and select. Now, another thing to keep in mind when you're setting these up is when you go into sketch mode, um, and I'll just start a sketch here on the top of this table. Um, you do have a new set of create, modify, and constrain um, toolbars. So all of these constraints I use, some more so than others, and the ones that I use a lot, coincident, horizontal, vertical, um, I've got to the left side here. Um, I can also change parameters here in my sketch. Um, Let's see. So, I mean, a good way to do it is just go through here and say, you know, okay, I do two-point rectangle and I do centered rectangle, and I want to keep them this, you know, keep them side by side. Um, polygon I hardly ever use. Slot, no, not very often. Spline I do, and then mirroring and rectangular pattern. So I'm going to put rectangular pattern out there. So I'll pin that to my toolbar. Um, and I try to group them kind of logically. I would say rectangular pattern and mirroring are very similar. Um, so I put those two together. Uh, let's see and modify. I've got fillet, chamfer, trim, extend, break, scale, move. Um, yeah, I guess I can live with those. And my constraints. And then inspect is the same, insert is the same, all that's unchanged. So that's a quick overview of setting up things and how, it, how important it is to use the toolbar um, configured to your liking.